Big A, did you see the article about how Costco is making hundreds of millions on gold, silver coins? I didn't see the article, but I do know that Costco has been selling out instantly of all of its little gold bars and shit. Everyone's buying it and gold prices way up. So if you did buy it, you're actually in a good spot. Gold is at like multi-decade highs in large part due to fears of the resurgence of inflation. A Persian tradition is to buy gold as a wedding gift because it's a good investment for the couple. That's nice. Isn't gold just NFTs for boomers? <laughs> no, not really. It doesn't have that je ne sais quoi that only a monkey with a stupid face can give you. It's literally fungible. <laughs> oh, it isn't though, if you really think about it. It's an NFT, yeah. It's a non-non-fungible token. If suddenly huge deposits of gold are found, like twice or thrice the amount of gold present now, you mean like in the world, and shared by a couple of countries, do the other gold-based economies just collapse and wither? You mean some country finds such a massive supply of gold that it devalues all gold? Yeah, I mean, it would, if if you have a, <laughs> yeah, that, that, would, that would do it. That would be inflation of gold. People's gold supplies would be relatively smaller. Seems unlikely, but yes, an asteroid maybe could do that. If you guys find one, let me know. We'll split the profits. Why can't we just find an asteroid with a billion pounds of gold and then everyone's rich poggies? Just wanna, <laughs> just wanna be clear. When you drastically increase the supply of something that makes the individual pieces of it valueless. So you can't, everyone can't be rich. It would just, that's not how. <laughs> What's the most creative way you've seen someone avoid taxes? It's not particularly creative, but just the way rich people take out massive loans against their stock so they don't have to sell it and create a taxable event. And then, you know, when the IRS comes knocking, they are technically in debt from that loan. They get it at really low interest rates because of their stock. It was created for the first guy, but now they all do it. Art, where you buy a piece of art, it appreciates in value, you donate that to charity, then you can deduct the full value of the donated art against your taxes. So let's say you buy a $1 million piece of art, then you pay an art appraiser to say it's worth 8 million, then you donate that, now you're deducting 8 million. That's a crazy way of tax evasion that has been uh, done. If normal people know about they methods of tax evasion, then how do they till work? It's a great question, Zap Molkuno 69 Normal people cannot pull these off because they don't have connections with banks, large stock portfolios, tax lawyers to, to make the argument. They don't have the network that would be able to push anything like this through. I have a theory that if you see a ton of ads for a particular type of service, that means they're making way too much margin. Examples, VPN, sports betting, ISPs. I think you're onto something for sure with those examples. Sometimes you see it because it's the opposite <laughs> though. <laughs> Like for example, crypto companies, dot-com companies, they aren't making any money. They, they have uh, net losses, but they are taking investor money and their, their plan is to flood the market with advertising in order to get enough market share to make money later. So it can be both. Temu. <laughs> Temu is not making money or they're just dumping off uh, advertising. So what are your thoughts on companies like Raid Shadow Legends that spend a boatload on ads? Do you think more companies would see with this marketing plan or are they wasting money? The reason Raid can spend so much money is because they only need a little bit of that to hit to make it all back. The way whales work in mobile gaming is that even a couple whales, the return on investment for them is so high. They're, yeah, they're basically whale hunting. So they can spend what seems like an absurd amount of money, even though 98% of people that see it don't play the game, as long as of those people that play, a couple of them turn into whales. And all of a sudden they've made almost all of it. They've made more than all of it back. <laughs> and also for mobile games like that, they constantly need new newbies going into the game to make the whales feel big and strong. So the worst thing that can happen is it ends up being only whales and then the whales don't feel like they're flexing on anybody and then they quit. The whales need regular people playing so that they can feel strong like whales. That's why they spend. And so it is worth it to constantly spend money to just keep getting new blood. The second that, that dries up, the ecosystem dies. I've never understood the hate for AFK and Raid. They don't look too bad. I was able to have fun without spending money. I disagree with you, bro, respectfully. I do think there's people like you, like like my wife. Ari plays Fate, what is it called? Fate Grand Order or something? Fate Gotcha Games? And she has never spent a dime. But I don't think that's true for many people. And, and obviously the games wouldn't be making the money they're making 
if it wasn't obvious that some people get addicted and fucking punt money. But also, you know, there's a part of me, I'm, I'm not a big like nanny state person, bro. I don't think we need to have rules to make toast in our own goddamn toaster. <laughs> Just cause somebody can burn their hands. Like I understand, but I do think there's a line uh, of predatoriness that gotcha games have crossed. And almost, you can almost just look at their profits, bro, and just see like, okay, something, something's going on here. And what frustrates me is that it fucks with the whole game industry because, you know, if you can make a low budget looking mobile game and print 500 bucks of a person for rolling for one skin, then why would you ever make a, you know, a triple A well-crafted game that they might pay 60 bucks for? And then the incentives get so perverse that I think it fucks up the creation of, of more good games. But it is sort of self-correcting. I mean, right now, I think the industry is actually in a pretty healthy, not, I wouldn't say healthy spot because everyone's getting laid off. But I mean, there is a massive rise in the past year of indie games, self-published, self-created indie games as they get easier to make of people filling in all of the gaps that AAA wasn't. So they're all roguelikes. And what about Power World, dude? Palatro. That's roguelike. But I mean, Power World is like an example. Or... Um, Content warning or legal company. I mean, these are all these are all games that like probably wouldn't have got greenlit by an Ubisoft that are just getting made because because of Steam and because of the ability to make games is getting cheaper and easier every year. Sony Santa Monica makes good highly produced games. I think it's normal fall. No, I mean I'm not saying nobody does it. I'm just saying it's clearly taken a backseat in the industry to like live service, gotcha, that type of stuff. So, what are your thoughts on sin taxes? Should we have a higher digital ad tax? We we'll have to pay for TikTok, Facebook, mobile games. Wait, I'm sorry. What What is getting taxed in that situation? I mean, in general, if you tax something, the idea is that it gets more expensive. So usage goes down. This is like cigarette taxes, you know? I mean, soda taxes. It, it works. Usage drops because because the cost goes up. I'm not opposed to it. I mean, it would be funny if every time someone posted a rage bait thing on social media, we taxed it. <laughs> you had to pay the government fucking 20 bucks every rage bait. And then all of a sudden we could start cleaning up the internet of just fucking being constant, nonstop rage bait, <laughs> nonstop anger farming for impressions. Elon would be homeless. Can you imagine how much of a hater you have to be to drop a 20 bomb just to say, fuck you? <laughs> Say your movie sucked. Yeah, you, you have to really fucking commit. The way I think it should be income scale, though. I'm actually pissed off now. Cause now only Elon. Elon can rage bait all day. He's a billionaire. He can just keep dropping 20s. Well, the common man who wants to make fun of Elon has to spend $20. I'll do it to call Elon a fucking poon, but it's not fair. It's not a long-term fair. To be fair, Elon did spend $40 billion to rage. <laughs> I guess income wise, he did spend similar to me spending 20 in order to try and fucking talk shit on social media. Jesus Christ, what a dumb fucking choice. There are uh, countries that have percentage of net worth based fines though. Like parking, like uh, speeding tickets that are, get to be six figures. This is like the Nordics. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool because, you know, if a fine is based on a common person's wealth, it's not even a fine to a rich person. Like they don't have to pay. Didn't the head of Nokia got stung with that? I didn't know that specifically. It is funny that, you know, right now Novo Nordisk is the number one company in Denmark, bigger than the entire Denmark GDP, but it is not as big as Nokia used to be. Nokia used to be just like a massive, massive portion of the country. How much would they have to find a rich streamer like you to make it hurt? If they find me even one penny, I am breaking down. I am falling to my knees. Every Scent. I've Mr. Krabs in this bitch. <laughs> Not one cent is going to Joe Biden, dude. Not one cent. I was gonna watch the Clips Channel videos, but I'm here to improve my attention span. Now you're in one. Adish, put this to the end. <laughs> Adish, this is the outro. Play the outro music right now. He's in it. This could happen to you. Twitch.tv slash Atriog.